Okay, the final session before the closing keynote. And it will be about a four-letter word, CQRS. So please welcome Mikael Sundberg to talk about this. Thank you. Yes, as mentioned, my name is Michael. I work at Klarna, where we, the last two years, I would say, implemented event sourcing in some of our systems. And I wanted to share some of the things we learned. It will mostly be problems we had, because that's the interesting things. Things that are easy are usually not something you need to share. But first, we need to know what event sourcing is. And to keep it simple, there is, uh, that event sourcing is, instead of storing the current state of your thing, let's say orders, you store everything that happened. So let's say again, if you have an order and you change the order amount, you don't update that row. You add a new row saying order amount updated. You can also, but don't have to, send the events outside of your application. And you can, but don't have to, use CKRS. Um, so that's just the base, and that's all I'm going to teach you about event sourcing. There's more to know, but that's another talk. First thing we had problems with was testing. And we, of course, have unit tests, uh, like everyone, I hope. Uh, and we also have black box testing, where we launch our application and call the REST endpoints, or however that application talks. But now we had a new problem, and that is when you change an event, the old event still needs to work, but you can't create that anymore. If you add a field to your order and you create that, it's, it's there from now on. But your production database won't have that field on all its orders. Um, this happened to us uh, in production, and it was kind of sad. So what we started doing then was that every time we changed the order, we also create a test that immediately writes this test, th this state of the order to the database. So then we can have a history of how the order have looked over time and do all the different operations that we usually do on it and be sure that it works. The next thing that we had problems with was monitoring, something that we thought we were really good at. Because when something goes wrong, we always notice. We monitor if we return 500, if you can't reach the neighboring applications, and everything like that. But when you emit events, and you expect consumers to act on those events, it can also happen that something just doesn't happen. So how do you know that something that should have happened didn't happen? There, there's no metric to read. You can count that as many things happen in both places, but that could be a coincidence. Let's take an example. We have an order service, which I do. And we send events to Kafka in this case. It could be anything. Just consider it to be a queue if you don't know what Kafka is. And then we have a consumer reading these events, doing something. So in our example, the order service could create an order, and the consumer indexes this in Elasticsearch. So we have a good and fast read model. But how do we know that the consumer has handled everything? Did something disappear in Kafka, or in network, or in a small atomic war inside there somewhere? So the way we solved this is we was inspired by Hansel and Greta. So now our applications, they throw out breadcrumbs when they walk. And now we can compare and see that we have breadcrumbs for everything in both applications. So we solved basically our event sourcing problem with event sourcing. So now, when the order service creates an order, it also emits an event saying, I created an order to another topic or channel in Kafka. And the consumer will also do this. It will say, I indexed this order in, in Elasticsearch. And now we can match. So when the order service creates this order, and the consumer hasn't done anything, let's say 10 minutes is our threshold, we get an alert. And then, if it fixes the problem, the consumer 
will emit its event and we go green. This is also great. If you have a problem somewhere and you fix it, and you don't actually know, did everything fix itself now? Have you handled all events everywhere? Maybe you had a bug in the consumer, so you didn't handle all events. Now we know. Something that caused a lot of fights is that we, we want to keep our domain small and focused on orders in this case. But there is someone creating the orders and there are many people consuming the orders. So they could consider you to be a message bus, which is basically what you are for them, but you're more. Let's take an example. Here we have our order service again, still sending things to Kafka. We have now have three different consumers doing different things and a checkout service that creates the orders when a checkout is complete. And one consumer has a new requirement. They need to know how many birds a customer have. And they go to the checkout service and say, can you gather this information during checkout? And they say, sure. It's important for the company, and we'll do it. And then they talk and say, OK, so how should we send this to you? They say, but just send it to be the order. That's, I mean, you already do that. And then they go to the grumpy order service. That's me. And I say, I don't want to know this. Because it's not something on an order. It could be something on a customer, maybe. It could be something in analytics. But it doesn't belong on an order. And when, when you said no enough times, uh, and people get angry on you, you, you start wondering. But it's important to keep your orders, or orders aggregate, an order aggregate, if that is what you're using. But the checkout service and consumers are also right. This is how they talk. So now we need to help them. So how you solve this problem depends on everything. So I won't go into that. But if they need a customer service, maybe you should build it for them. Or if they need another way to talk, you should probably help them. Just saying no uh, doesn't create great uh, feedback to you. I tried. But protect your domain. It's important. Uh, if it grows, you will have validation problems, and people will start depending on things you don't care about, and everything will just go south. So it's very important to keep it small. Stupid clicker, thank you. Another thing we went in the wrong direction, I would say is event schema. And the problem we did here was that we don't have one, really, because it sounded hard. And you know, we are sending JSON. Everyone can read JSON, so they don't really need a schema. And when we looked at Avro and Protobuf in the beginning, the only thing we saw was performance. And we don't really care. So why do all that work for only performance? But it turns out it's so much more. It's pretty hard for consumers to create a domain model for themselves if all they have to go on is your DTOs or your examples of your events. If you had Avro or, or similar, they could generate something they could use, or you could generate something for them. And you had have uh, versioning and everything like that for free. We now generate an Avro schema from our details, since you apparently can do that. Um, but we don't use it to send everything. We don't actually know how to use it still. But we have something to point at, which people at least are a little bit happier about. But if we would have spent that extra, I don't know, day, two days in the beginning, it would have solved a lot of problems for us. And I'm sorry for not doing that. Something that was very exciting was that some events are faster than others. It, it might sound weird, but it's true. Uh, we use Kafka for, as a message queue. 
and that one guarantees that everything you put in, it will come out in the same order, depending on how you put them in. But that requires you to do everything correct as well. Let's take an example. The order service is back. It now creates an order by writing it to the database. And when that's done, it can return the HTTP response because the Kafka sending can be asynchronous. It doesn't really matter. And when, and when the callee gets the response, it says, oh, no, I want to change this order immediately. So now you get a new call updating this order, which is fine. Works great in the database. But the problem now is that there is network in the world, and you can never trust the network for being reliable and always have the same speed. So this second event bypasses it inside the order service. This could also happen if you have several instances of the service, then you, you can't do a lock anywhere, so don't think about that either. So now the events go to the consumer and they get an update to an order they don't have. And then they come to you looking something like this and said, you promised. Why did I get an update to an order that I don't have? And they're very sad. And so are you, because you now have a bug to fix. Uh, but you have a fun problem to solve. So uh, at least that's something. So we solve this as we try to solve most problems. We added a new service. So now the order service doesn't send anything to Kafka anymore, which means we could remove a lot of Kafka sending code. Kafka is amazing. It's really easy to send messages to it, unless you want it correct. And then this new service reads from the database, and you can order by aggregate ID, an aggregate version. So it can't make a mistake. And you can partition here as you want. And everyone is happy. Our events are in order. There were some good things as well. So uh, I wanted just to list some things. When you have event sourcing, your queries are always fast because you can't really fail on indexing on one column. It's fairly easy. Instead of having to optimize for joins and whatnot when you're using other ways. And replicating immutable data is extremely easy. It's just to copy it everywhere. We use the same thing that we send messages to Kafka to and just change the destination to another database. And now we have multi-data center master-master replication, which is fairly nice. And also, you can't query the data easily. And yes, that's a good thing, because that means you have to do it right. So now we have to move the querying somewhere else. Maybe Elasticsearch, or maybe create a specific read model for your use case. And it encourages good domain models, unless you make a fat one. And you want to keep them small, and you can spread your events to many different domain models. And, and nothing is ever deleted, which makes everyone happy. When you've been running your thing in production for two years and someone comes and asks you, can we get history for your orders? You say, sure, give me 10 minutes and here's the end point. And it also works for everything that was ever done. There are many more things that are good, but I think we'll keep it to this. But overall, event sourcing has been really, really great. So I can recommend you all to try to use it, maybe just something small at first. It's very easy, and it makes your life much better. Thank you. There are some images, and here, yes. And if you have some questions, I'll be around afterwards.